All right, so all of that takes us into point two. So the first one had to do with ex sexually explicit materials within in uh, schools in Virginia, which is a purple state. They weren't even trying to ban it. They were just trying to get parental notification and an easy way for parents to be notified. Couldn't get a single Democrat to vote for it. Next was HB 1387, K through 12 schools and higher ed institutions designation of interscholastic sports based on sex. This is the protect women's sports bill, right? We had a couple of different uh, people that dropped this. This is a fun one. Oh, Karen Greenhall. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, this came before my subcommittee. Now I want I want to give you a I want to give you a quick aside here, which is kind of important because obviously this was going to be a very controversial bill. Um, th there was a lot of people that showed up to testify for it. Um, I actually there was there is a there is an organization in Virginia that decided to send out an email to everyone going, "You need to tell Delegate Freitas to hear this bill and ask him why he hasn't heard it yet." I, like I was a co patron on the bill. The reason why we hadn't heard it yet is because the patron came to me and said, "Hey." Can we hear this next week instead of this week so I can get all the people that are coming to testify? To yeah, sure. So just be careful about some of the groups out there that want to pretend to be conservative, but in reality are just really good at making money. All right. So anyways, this bill comes up and, and this bill, again, it went through the whole process of essentially saying that if you're going to compete in women's sports, you got to be a biological woman. And, and the whole mechanism for how do you how do you determine that? goes into, because some people say, oh, we're going to use birth certificates. All right, well, what if they change the birth? Well, you got to use the original birth certificates. All right, well, what if you can get the original birth certificate changed, right? And then, so Karen said, well, typically when kids compete in, in high school sports, they have to go through a physical. At that physical, you know, it, it'll be determined what your biological sex is, and then that determines what sports you're allowed to compete in. And so I, I thought that actually kind of, you know, made sense with what they were trying to do. And, um, and they tried to put in certain protections. Obviously, there's cases where, you know, women can compete in men's sports. And that wasn't what she was necessarily trying to do. But she was, she was trying to protect women's sports because we, we now have quite a few examples of men who were barely ranked or were ranked like in the hundreds coming in and then dominating in women's sports. And this isn't just a simple question of, you know, hey, is that unfair for the actual sporting event? No, for for some kids, like this could mean scholarships. This could mean other opportunities. This could mean things that they worked for their entire life. Where now someone like Leah Thomas shows up and says, "I'm I'm a yeah. I know I was ranked like way down when, when the men's sporting, but now I, I want to compete in the women's, and now I'm going to be ranked number one." And we, one of the people that actually came in and testified was Riley Gaines, who actually tied Leah Thomas in in one of these events. And when she tied him. Uh, the NCAA came over and said, yeah, you guys both get the trophy, but Leah's going to hold it. Leah's going to be the one that, and, and Riley was like, wait a second. Like I, uh, we've worked all of our life for this. He was ranked. I forget what he was ranked. I think it was in the hundreds before. Now he comes over and, and dominates and he's going to be the one you put out front. Like this seems completely antithetical to what the NCAA and everyone else says about trying to lift up women's sports. And, and this becomes, I think this becomes, there was a lot of people that trashed Karen for, well, you should have just done it in higher ed. Why did you do it in high school? Because they get the scholarships in high school, right? This has, this has an effect. And, and Riley Gaines also mentioned something too that I, I, I think a lot of people weren't aware of, and that is Leah Thomas, right? Female Lima is a fully intact male, right? He, he's still got all the equipment. Well, he went over to the women's locker room, right? Because that was NCAA policy. One of and got undressed in front of all of them, and they had no idea this was coming. Like, got undressed in front of all of them, and looked at them while they got undressed. And and she talked about how this was really uncomfortable. And it wasn't just Riley. We had multiple women show up talking about how this is something that it, it infringes on their ability to get different academic opportunities, different sporting opportunities, um, and and. All races, right? It's not like it was just a bunch of like rich white girls that got up, all right? It was it was women from different backgrounds, uh, different races represented, uh, different instances, different experiences. I didn't expect my Democrat colleagues to vote for the bill, but I also didn't expect for them to treat the witnesses the way they did, to the point where I actually had to, like, because again, I was a subcommittee chair. I actually had to gavel down and say, the next time I hear one of the colleagues question the intentions of the people that have gotten up to testify for this bill, I am going to shut you down immediately. Because it wasn't, I understand the concerns that Riley and the other women that have got up to testify have concerned, but I also understand the concerns of, of the transgender community 
and you know, being worried about how this could potentially, it, that wasn't the argument. It was, I don't know why these people are so motivated by hatred and bigotry. I don't know why. It, are they just looking for someone to pick on? Can you remind the audience what that bill number was again? Yeah. Let me put um, it up here. Because it was a, would, HB 1387. If, if this committee meeting was, I did not get to see this committee meeting, but there's an archive yeah. of every single committee meeting that's hosted on uh, the Virginia General Assembly website. So for those in the audience that care about this issue, and even if they don't live in Virginia, but they want to get a taste of how their Democrat politicians in their state talk about issues like this, oh, yeah. I'd love for them to I, actually two, watch two, that committee two, meeting. Two Democrats, essentially, when they when it came turn to speak to the bill, and that's their opportunity to just kind of talk about their feelings on the bill, it wasn't good enough for them to just say, hey, I think this was really important to protect, you know, kids with gender dysphoria or to protect kids or to make sure they can participate. No, that if they would have given that argument, I would have disagreed with their overall reasoning as to the importance of the bill. But no, it was, it was essentially accusing anybody that would support something like this of being bigoted, of wanting to pick on trans kids, right? That was it. That's the only possible motivation. And you're a turf, right? Yeah. It, it, it couldn't be that it couldn't be that lo and behold, women, don't like getting undressed in front of men in their locker rooms. Well, and you think about it, they all push this narrative that one in four women has been sexually assaulted in her life. If that is true of a locker room full of girls, how many of those girls are now being forced to undress in the presence of a biological male yeah. and they're ha they have to either see or be seen? Yeah. And, and if you don't like how it, many you're a women bigot. are going to get triggered by this, but you're a bigot for getting triggered now. Yeah. I mean, how unsafe do they want women to be at this point? Well, so unsafe that you see situations now in the United States. There's another one up in Scotland right now where they've actually put men convicted of rape in women's prisons because they claim to be women. And J.K. Rowling speaks out against this and then gets death threats yeah. for it. Keep in mind, Rowling is not a conservative. No, not She's at all. She's an old yeah. school feminist. She used yeah. to be, she stopped, I believe she but stopped like, doing this now, but she used to be a huge donor to the Labor Party until yeah. they basically told her to go take a hike and she was like, okay, fine. Um, but it, we're talking about prisons here and we're talking about like, oh, these college sports. But here in Virginia, a girl was raped in a bathroom by a, a transgender male. And didn't it actually happen multiple it, times. He went on. They they covered it up. The school mm -hmm. covered it up because they were so worried about trans people. And to the point where they're like, oh, this is just a boy in a skirt. It's not real trans. Are you kidding? This person walks around as a trans person all the time. Why are they not real trans oh. now? And then they go. No to true the, Scotsman. <laughs> then this guy goes to the next school. And what happens? Oh, he assaults another girl in the bathroom. Well, it was in a classroom, but yeah. Oh, in a classroom. Okay. Well, well and, and they want to sit here and wonder why we were all fighting against having biological males in the bathroom with girls. Well, and then part of the issue, too, is when this moved onto the floor, and we had the floor debate. Delegate Danica Rome, who's the first transgender elected to a state state legislature uh, proceeded to talk about all the problems that the delegate had with the bill. And right. And some of that had to do with things like, well, it says biological sex. Where in the code does it say biological sex? And, it, and it's amazing as if I, I love how none of us know what biological sex is until we got to the abortion debate. And then all of them remembered what biological sex was because yeah. they were wondering why a man was talking about it. But anyways, um, and, and the, the question was, and the other thing too, that I think is interesting about this is they kept trying to make this argument that, well, when they're taking the puberty blockers and they're taking other things that lowers the rate of testosterone and, and it interrupts puberty enough to where they don't have the same advantage over boy. It's like, okay, you've just acknowledged that if we allow human beings to develop naturally, there is a competitive physical advantage between men and women. Thanks for that acknowledgement. Secondly, you're now essentially encouraging puberty blockers at a much earlier age in order to justify your participation within these sports, right? That's, that's the, that's the, un, that's the story that accidentally got let out as you're arguing for one thing and you actually prove, right. They're basically saying, along. Oh, don't worry. We're chemically castrating them anyway. They can't hurt the girls. Pretty much, pretty much. But, but again, it was, it was a complete lack of regard on display for the, like, I, I want to say it was something like 15 women that got up to testify on why they thought this was necessary. And, and if you, if you thought, if you thought that the democratic party was the party of women, I encourage you to watch how they ended up getting treated when, when two Democrats got up and decided to speak on the bill, because I will tell you right now, the concerns for those women's were just not present at all, not present at all. 
And if you disagreed with any of this or if you had any concerns with respect to what I think is inappropriate to make men and women undress in front of one another in a situation where they don't want to, right? Whether it's something like that, where it's something about the academic opportunities that come from these scholarships to institutions of higher education, whether it comes to just basic fairness within a competitive environment, right? None of that was regarded. None of it. And, and the other thing too that I thought was interesting, and, and Delegate Rome brought this up, it's like, well, they already have processes in place to distinguish between someone who's really trans and, and who is maybe just faking it to get on the sports team. How do you distinguish between those two things? Literally, I want to know, what is the criteria? What it, do they got to wear a dress? Because now you're saying that, oh, womanhood has nothing to do with your biology, but it has everything to do with your outfit. It's a costume now? Or, or, is it, or, or aren't you guys also the ones that say that gender is fluid? So maybe they were male right now, but maybe they were field just for the purposes of the competition, and now they're male. Are you going to deny their lived experience and their deep psychological belief that they're gender fluid and so it changed over time? Or are you just going to arbitrarily say that at this point they don't get to compete because we don't really think you're genuinely trans? And what government official gets to make that determination? Well, they used to they used to say, oh, you're conflating gender with biological yeah. sex. They don't even... Well, now they're like, well, no, no, no. Uh, we're... You could be female and trans. Yeah. You can be a trans female. And well, I'm sorry, isn't female yeah. and male the biological sex and woman and man is the gender? Why are we now why are we now lumping it all together? Oh, is it because you were lying before yes. when you said there was a difference? There is no yeah. difference between male and and man and female and woman. Yeah. You you can say one thing's more feminine and one thing's less feminine. Yeah. Sure. But one's it, more manly, one's less manly. How, how many people in America do you would would we guesstimate are trans? So I, I would say like five years ago it would have been like point zero zero two percent of the population. With Gen Z it's with gone Gen, through the roof. With Gen Z it's it's increased twenty fold within the last ten years. Mm. All right, so that was that was the uh, protecting women's sports legislation. Um, you know, a, a, again, I, I didn't expect my Democrat colleagues to vote for this because they 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 are all in on on the LGBTQ side of this, and they feel like any sort of any sort of protection at this point is just turfing. Um, but I, I didn't expect them to display Victim that shame. sort. Of, I didn't expect expect them to display that sort of like hostility toward people that were testifying. Because again, what we found over and over again, and I found this in other discussions I had during session, when they're talking about lived experience, that's all that matters. You can throw out all the empirical data. You can throw out, it doesn't matter. The lived experience is paramount. When we talk about lived experience, that doesn't count. 